Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Chill Survival Series. We have a big day ahead of us because today we need to focus on getting a stable food supply as well as exploring for more essential resources. And it looks like a brand new day is upon us in this world, so let's begin. So I figured the best thing to do today would be to start off by working on some farmland so we can get more of a reliable food source. The fish we've been eating have been great, but I think it's definitely time for us to expand our palates a bit. And I think I'm gonna start by making some basic animal pens first for some cows and sheep. Not only are they both really good sources of food, but leather and wool are also really important crafting items for things like books or decorational items. Now I wanna make a really cute barn in this area today. However, that's gonna require a lot of resources that we don't quite yet have. So for now, we're just gonna make a simple fence pen to keep the animals contained. Let's just put this carpet on top so we can easily get in and out. And let's go find some cows. Ah, and there's two right here, perfect. Hello, my friends, do you see this? Yes, you do. Now I don't want cows and sheep in the same pen because it gets really messy and disorganized, but avoiding all these sheep is gonna be pretty tricky. <laughs> and just as I suspected, one of them is of course following us around. And I don't think he has any intention of leaving, so you know what, it's fine. He can hang out with these cows. All right, let's get these cows fed so we can start breeding them. It's nighttime and it's getting pretty dodgy out here, so we should probably go to bed. Oh, I've been spotted. Okay, I'm just gonna run. Good thing our house is really close by. Let's rest up for the night and get a good night's sleep so we have all the energy we need for tomorrow. A fresh new day is upon us and I'm ready to get back into it. All right, the cows are all sorted, so now let's do the same thing for the sheep. Okay, buddies, we're gonna grab you. And how about you as well? There we go. Nice and easy. All right, let's get you guys fed. Aw, buddy, are you feeling left out? But you made your choice. Oh, hi. I already gave you wheat. Look how cute you are. You're adorable. Okay, all of the animals have been fed, which is a good start, but I think that's about all we can do with them for now. The very last thing I'm gonna do though is gather up a few more seeds and plant them because we are gonna need tons of wheat later on today. It never hurts to get a head start on your crops because they always need time to grow. All right, the soil's all tilled, so let's just get these few seeds in and then we're good to go. Now that we have the beginnings of our farmland sorted, I think we should finally go explore that cave nearby. We're gonna need lots of iron and other resources to be able to upgrade our farm today. In order to be well prepared for this cave adventure, I think I'm gonna need some new tools. Unfortunately, we don't have any iron left, so we're gonna have to go with stone for now. And while we're at it, let's also make some torches so we can properly light up this cave. And last but not least, I'm gonna stock up on a little bit more salmon. It's always important to have a good supply of food when heading out on an adventure. All right, with all of this stuff collected, I think we're ready to go. Let's see what adventure awaits us in this cave. So the last time we were here, I noticed there might be an opening to a bigger part of the cave that goes down further. Yeah, that definitely looks like it might lead somewhere. We should go check that out. Hey buddy, what you doing up there? You watching over the place? I don't think he notices me. Let's keep it that way. Oh. Yep, this looks like a pretty huge cave. Honestly, I'm a little bit scared because there seems to be tons of mobs down here, but this is perfect. Look at all of the pockets of iron around here. That's exactly what we're looking for. All right, I think we just have to make our way down and hopefully not get attacked by any mobs in the process, which might be kind of difficult considering there's a group of creepers right where we need to land. All right, I am just gonna run and start torching this place up and hope for the best. Oh no. Oh, there's a baby zombie chasing me. Oh no, there's a lot happening. There are a lot of mobs, so I think I should make a safe spot to hide from them. Okay, this area is only two blocks tall, so if I just dig in here, they won't be able to get me. Ow. Oh no, there's two. Okay, this is getting pretty risky. Don't kill me, please. Okay, I'm okay. I'm not gonna lie, that was really close. But hey, it worked. We're okay though, we're safe in here. This is, this is good. This is good, there's just a spider, that's fine. Oh my gosh, look how many there are. That is a lot. I think I'm just gonna stay in my little safe spot right here and hit them with my sword from afar. There we go. I solved the zombie issue, well, part of it, but I definitely did not solve the issues of all the creepers and stuff either. I think I should light up this cave a little bit more so less things will spawn. I'm just gonna make a run for it and spam as many torches as I can, and hopefully this will solve our mob issue.
Okay, that should make it so less mobs spawn, but let's head back to our hidey area so we can recollect ourselves. So since I'm in my safe spot, it doesn't really look like I can get to all of the ores that I wanted to get to out there, but there are some right here, and it also looks like there is a geode right over here as well. Hopefully my torching of the area kind of reduced the amount of mobs that are going to spawn over there, so then I can later get all of that stuff. But for now, let's start collecting some of this iron so we can upgrade our tools again. We desperately need to get ourselves an iron sword because, yeah, these stone ones, not doing a great job. Alright, let's make ourselves a little work area right here, and we'll make a furnace so we can start smelting iron. We don't have any coal, so let's just pop these planks in here, and let's get this iron cooking. Let's just grab this, and the first thing I want to make is a better sword. We also could use another iron pickaxe since we're going to be mining a lot down here. So with a more efficient pickaxe and a better sword, I think we're going to stand a better chance in these caves. Also, it looks like there's significantly less mobs now that I've lit this up a little bit, so that's good. Oh yeah, this is much more manageable. Now that we have a fully lit area safe from mobs, let's start gathering the resources we came here for. <gasps> Lapis! Nice! Let's definitely grab that as well because we are going to want to do some enchanting eventually. Alright, it looks like I'm already going to have to use the coal that we just gathered for more torches. Hey, I'd rather this place be as safe as possible rather than having to fight mobs everywhere. Also, I just noticed that there's a bunch of slimes jumping around, which is amazing because that means that this is a slime chunk. So if we ever need any for redstone or leads, we can just easily come down here and grab some. Ah, look at this. A big peaceful cave with no mobs. Alright, let's keep gathering up all the stuff we need so we can head on out of here. I've also been taking a bit of time to grab some granite, andesite, and diorite because I often use them a lot in my builds, so it's good to have a stockpile of them. I think we've gathered most of the resources on this level, and I'm really curious to see what's above us on this ledge, so I think I'm going to pillar up to find out. Uh oh. Oh no. I should have saw that one coming. Okay, round two. Let's see what's up here. I did have to run around spamming torches again, but there's also been a lot of iron and coal up here as well. So I think it was worth coming up here. I've also seen quite a bit of copper in these caves, but I think I'm going to leave it for now. I would like to eventually build with it later down the line, but at least we know it's here for when we need it. Alright, I think I've gotten everything I want from this cave, so let's head back to our little workstation so we can grab all of our items and head back up. Oh yeah, we've got plenty of iron, that's perfect. And we also have a really good supply of coal as well. I'm just gonna grab all of the other items that we collected, and we're gonna head on out after we do one last thing. We can't leave without checking out this geode. I'm always so happy when I come across these in caves. They're such beautiful blocks to build with, but my favorite thing is how magical they sound when you run around them. That was admittedly way too fun for me, but I'm satisfied now. I think we've got more than enough of what we need from here, so let's head back to our cozy home for a proper night's rest. So we're back home at our base with everything from our cave adventure nicely organized and put away. I don't have enough leather yet to make item frames so I can properly label the chests, but this is a good start. So the first thing that we need to do is get this iron burning because we desperately need to upgrade our tools. So I'm going to make ourselves a new axe, an extra shovel, and some more shears. Alright, this is so much better than what we had before. I definitely feel a lot more equipped to start building again. We also have a really large supply of iron left over, which is great. One thing that I really love to have for early game is a bone meal machine, and I think with all this iron I can probably make one now. I often find that once you get enough farmland, you're always left with a huge stockpile of seeds, so it's nice to be able to put them to a better use. Now I'm going to put this bone meal machine close to our crops for easy access. And the first thing that I'm going to do is place a barrel down at the bottom right here. And then on top of that barrel, I'm going to place a hopper feeding into it. Then on top of the hopper goes the compost bin where the bone meal is going to be made. And on top of that compost bin goes another hopper, which is going to have a barrel placed on top of it like that. Now let's grab some seeds to test this thing out. And of course we've got to replant some of these seeds to grow back our crops. Alright, let's give this a shot. So you can see that the composter is automatically filling up, and then once it reaches the top, it automatically feeds down into the barrel below. So it works! The only thing I'm going to change is making it so that the barrel at the bottom rests one block higher. There, I think that's a lot easier to access. Now we still need to keep using these seeds to expand our farmland because we desperately need to grow as many crops as we can, but it's really nice to have this bone meal machine ready for when we need it. 
So now that we have this cool little piece of equipment for our farmland, I say it's time for us to get everything else we need to build this barn. And it looks like the sun is setting, so let's get some much needed rest for the night. So the first thing that we're gonna need for this build is lots of spruce. I think that should be no surprise by now. And I'm so happy I planted this area of taiga trees earlier on because it's really come in handy for gathering large amounts of spruce at once. There's currently three large spruce trees right here, so let's chop all of them up. always replant your saplings. Next, we're going to need a little bit of extra oak. And lastly, we're going to have to grab some birch as well. Alright, that should be a good amount of wood to start with, so let's toss this in a barrel near the place that we're going to build. And since we're already here, let's feed our cows and sheep. Okay, the last thing that we need to gather for this build is a ton of clay so we can make some bricks. Since it's a barn, I figured a red roof made of brick and granite would be perfect. The lush cave that we found the other day is a little bit far from here, so I'm just gonna pop into a river to grab some instead. All right, I think that's a good amount of clay for what we need. But before we leave this river, I'm gonna grab a little bit more fish to eat since our farmland doesn't really produce us much food yet. So in the meantime, it's still gonna be the fish diet. All right, I think that should hold us over for a while. So let's grab all of our stuff and head on home. All right, I left my hunger to get pretty low. So first, let's get some of this salmon cooking up. And in the bottom furnace, we'll start cooking up this clay into bricks. All right, let's eat this up now. I am very, very hungry. I also just remembered that we have two more furnaces out here that we can use to make bricks. So let's go ahead and get that burning as well. Okay, we've got a decent amount of bricks to start with. So I say we get started on our build while we wait for the rest of this to cook. The bricks are gonna be for our roof, so it's gonna be a while till we actually need to use them anyway. And since we need some granite in our build as well, we're gonna grab this too. We're also gonna need some stone and cobble, as well as some oak leaves, and of course some azalea leaves as well. So let's bring all of this stuff on over to the farmland and begin building. So here's the chest full of most of the things that we're gonna need to build this barn. It's gonna be a bit bigger of a build, so we have to make sure we have enough space for it. And I want it to still remain relatively close to this lake, but also have enough space from it that I could plant a bunch of crops and stuff outside the barn as well. I'm kinda thinking this spot right here would be perfect. So let's begin by leveling this piece off a bit. And I think we might need a little bit more space to work with, so I'm gonna add some dirt around the edges to level this area off a bit more. There, that gives us tons of space to work with. So I think we're gonna start this build the same way we did with our last one, which is building out the footprint to see if it fits in this space properly. So we're gonna have our main part of the barn and then a little piece that attaches at the side for extra storage. Yeah, I think this fits perfectly within this space. So now that the footprint is done, let's throw up some beams. And I'm gonna have the structure on the side set a little bit lower than the main part of the barn. This will help it give more of an interesting shape, but also make sure the barn itself is the focal point. And I think we're good to go with that. I'm just gonna quickly pop these pieces of stone out because this is where the barn doors are gonna go. All right, now that our beams are in place, let's get these walls up. For the walls, I'm going with a gradient of stripped oak and oak planks, going into stripped birch and birch planks. This block palette is similar to our starter house, which is good because I want them to complement each other. But to make it stand out on its own a bit more, we're going to be adding different blocks to the roof and other places. The walls look pretty wild in terms of texture right now, but hopefully when it's all stripped, it will look exactly how we intended it to. And I would say this is not bad. Not bad at all. There's a couple patches like these where the stripped oak and birch are touching, and it doesn't really blend as well, but that can easily be fixed with some planks. There, much better. All right, now that the walls are done, it's time for us to move on to the roof. Barn roofs are often steep on the bottom and then gently slope up. So to achieve that, we're gonna use two slabs to make a full block on the bottom half, and then we're gonna gently slope up using one slab. And we're just gonna go until we hit the middle point right here. So after filling in the other side, you can see how the roof is just a bit steeper on the bottom and then gently curves upwards. And I think that looks pretty close to a barn roof. And for the second half of the build, I'm just going to use some slabs to keep it a small slope going up. There, I think that's looking awesome and you can really start to see it coming together now. 
basically all that's left for the main structure is to grab all these bricks that we've been burning so we can fill in the roof. And while we're here, let's grab our stone cutter because that's going to come in handy as well. Oh, and I forgot, we should have a couple more bricks out here as well. And with all of these, I think we definitely have more than enough for our build. Wait, is that sheep down there? Oh no, it looks like a couple of our buddies fell. All right, we got to save them. I'm honestly surprised I didn't even fall in this hole yet. Can you get out of here, buddy? Yeah, there you go. You're free. All right, rescue mission number two. You're down here pretty far, my dude. Come on, let's get you moving on out of here. Wait, I see like a glow of light down here. Oh, I think I may have just found easier access to the cave I was exploring earlier. Yep, we most definitely did. All right, let's just close that on up for now and let's get this pig out of here. There you go, buddy. You did it, you're free. No, don't go back in. And then we're just closing this off because this is a hazard to all the animals around here. And let's be real, it's probably a hazard to me as well. All right, let's get this roof filled in. So I really like mixing granite with the brick because not only does it pair well, but I find that it also makes the roof look a little bit worn down. And the last thing I'm gonna do to this roof is add an addition to the top. We're just gonna toss a simple sloped roof on this one. We'll fill in the sides with some birch. Get our brick and granite rooftop on this as well. All right, I think that's it for the structure. And I'm really happy with how the shape turned out, so I think it's time to get into my favorite part, the decoration. I find that having your structure set up and ready to go to how you want it is really important because it makes it easier to visualize how you're gonna decorate. I'm also so happy that we got all of that iron earlier because now I can make one of my favorite decoration pieces of all, the lantern. Okay, to start off decorating, I think it's only right that we build our barn door first. It is an integral piece to a barn after all. Let's just close all these trap doors up. And I think that's looking cute. Now let's give a little bit of extra shape to this entrance by adding in some upside down stairs with a trap door in the middle. And we'll throw in some trap doors here and get some on the other side as well. And since there's actually gonna be some cows in here, let's just toss some gates in at the entrance. Oh, it looks like the day's already slipped away from me so I should probably go to sleep really quickly. Ooh, look at that sunrise behind the barn. That's perfect. All right, let's add some additional trim to the top to join up the roof line. And I think I'm gonna keep it simple by adding in a couple of azalea planters and a lantern. All right, next I'm gonna add some spruce fencing to the side of the barn to make it look like a ladder you can climb to the roof. And I'm just gonna replace some of the pieces of roof and fencing with azalea to make it look more overgrown. Barns usually also have big stockpiles of supplies, so I'm gonna make a big pile of barrels and to make it look bound together, I'm gonna use some fencing and ladders. And let's do the same thing on the other side, except with a giant hay bale. Next, I think I'm gonna build a cute little covered storage area for some wood. And I think if we pile the logs up haphazardly, it'll make it look like they were kinda just tossed in there quickly. And I think another pile of hay maybe mixed in with some pumpkins on the side over here couldn't hurt as well. I'm really loving how this barn is coming together so far. All right, so I think the next thing I'm gonna do is make an outdoor area for the cows to hang out in. And I'm just gonna keep it really simple by making a circular shape of leaves and spruce fencing. And I definitely have to make sure to place some trap doors on some of the leaves that are one block high, otherwise the cows can definitely get over those. All right, the design of the pen is done and I think it looks really cute. I added just a few more extra details around the exterior and I think it's pretty much done. I'm really happy with how it turned out, so now let's move on to the interior. Barn interiors can sometimes look pretty rough, so I'm gonna start by changing all of this grass to coarse dirt, pathing, and cobble. I'm completely out of mossy cobble, so I'm just being resourceful and using these upside down stairs. I'm gonna make a little workstation in this corner, so I feel like having beams here would help close the space off a little bit more. Now let's just fill this space in with some work tables. We can also add in a cute fireplace in this corner to work with and also for warmth. Next, let's add in a cute little storage unit on this side. We could just toss some light in here and honestly just decorate it with some leaves. You can really fill these units with anything you want though. And for some last finishing details, I'm just gonna add some shelving that's higher up. We might need to add some chests or other stuff here and there, but I think that room's pretty much done. I feel like if you're making a barn, you gotta have a little rafter area. It doesn't have to be anything big, but it's cute to have this little messy storage area up top. All right, we need a way to access this storage area, so let's get some trap doors and attach ladders to it so we can climb up and down. I want this little space to look like stuff just gets tossed up here and forgotten, so I'm gonna cover some of this with leaves and just place random barrels and hay around. And for the ceiling, I think I'm just gonna keep it simple and add some beams to it using slabs. I want this barn to be really simple and overgrown, so I think that kinda helps with the vibe. 
And I think for the last bits of decoration in the interior, I'm just gonna add some extra piles of hay and barrels with some pieces of granite on top. I really love the contrast of the red and the yellow between the granite. All right, I think the interior is pretty much done. And I'm so happy with how it's looking. It's definitely got those cozy cottage core vibes, that's for sure. It also has some function to it with the workspace for me, but also I think the cows are gonna enjoy it as well. And speaking of cows, the last thing that we need to do is work on the outdoor pen to make sure it's as nice as it can be for them. So the first thing we're gonna do is get some patches of coarse dirt around the edges here. And next I'm gonna add some patches of pathing to make the ground look worn in. And last but not least, I wanna make sure the cows have a nice bit of shade, so I'm gonna plant an azalea tree. Yeah, that looks nice. We've got some extra bone meal, so let's also give them some tall grass and flowers to hang out with. And I think this barn is perfect for our cows. We've got a nice big open area for them to enjoy, and on the inside they have some space to hang out, grab some water, and cool off from the sun. Oh, before I forget, I should probably gate in this workstation so the cows can't get into it. Don't want any accidents with them. Yeah, I think this space turned out really cool. I'm super excited about it. Ah, before I forget, let's just make a nice little path coming away from the barn. Adding pathing and things like patches of dirt and stuff around the edges of your build really helps make it feel like it's actually built into the land rather than just plopped on top of it. And let's just wind up a path this way towards our extra storage area. We'll get some more dirt in around this area, make it look a little bit more rough. We'll get some broken bits of fencing near the path. And of course, as always, you can't forget the leaves. I also always love to add them into the ground because they kind of look like little patches of fallen leaves or small shrubs. All right, I think we are actually done with the build now. I swear, I mean it, it's done, it's complete, and it's perfect, I love it. It has a lot of detail on the outside, which I love, and I'm really happy with how the detailing of the interior worked out as well. Pretty functional too. We've got my little work area with tons of storage for me, and the cows have a really large space to hang out as well. The only problem with it is that it needs more builds around it to really feel like it's in an actual farm area. But that just means we're gonna have to build more stuff. I don't think that's a bad thing. All right, let's finally get our cows in their new home. All right, buddies, are you ready? And I guess you two sheep, you come with me? Oh, eager, very eager. Coming back for you too. We can't leave any of you behind. All right, this might be a little bit of a pain. Let's do this. I think this sheep is just part of the cow group forever. Once we get a name tag, we're definitely naming him cow. All right, I actually think I may have gotten them all. Hold on, let me just close these gates up really quickly. Oh, we did it. They're in their home. Look at this. All right, cows and random sheep as well. Since you have all been so good, how about I give you all a treat? And by all, I mean four. I only had four wheat. Oh, look, I have one left over. There you go. You were the lucky wheat winner. Also, I had a bad feeling about keeping the trap doors on top of these things, and I didn't want to test my luck, so I replaced them all with slabs instead. And I'm kind of thankful I did, because I have definitely built cow pens before that did not function properly, and the whole thing is a mess. But would you look at this? We have a fully functioning barn for our cows to hang out in. And they look like they're having the time of their lives in here. Also, why are baby cows literally the cutest thing I've ever seen in this game? Hey, get out of here. How cute it is. It's adorable. I can't. All right, the cows are happy in their new barn, and I think our job here is done. Whoa. See? They're already getting the party started. Oh. They're having a bath too. I mean, that was for water, but you know what? You you can use that as a tub too. That's okay. It's whatever you want. I'm so happy they like it. All right, with the barn complete and the cows in their new home, I think that's gonna be it for today's episode. I know this was a bit bigger of a build than our starter house, so it took a little bit more time to get through, but I hope you all had fun watching the process. And if you enjoyed the episode and wanna leave a like and subscribe, I would really appreciate it because it really helps out this channel. Also, if you have any ideas for what you would like to see me do in this series, leave your suggestions in the comments. We're only just getting started with this world and so many fun adventures await us. I can't wait for what's next.